This web series produced for the Global News website and YouTube channel explores the world through your taste buds and brings people on a culinary adventure back to their homeland with dishes and stories that are just like home. And it was the brainchild of global web producer Rachel Lau who joins us now. And Rachel, uh, you're well into season two of Just Like Home. What kind of adventures have you been on? Yes, season two, we're very excited. Um, we are doing four episodes like the first season. Um, and what was really cool about um, these four that we filmed was that we really learned that food really comes from our mother's lines, our grandmothers who sort of taught us and, and brought that down to from generation to generation. So we learned from, you know, your Irish Nana, your Italian Nonna, from um, the Jamaicans who women rule the world down there. <laughs> and we went to Ganawage as well. In Ganawage, where you'll see right now that Rachel met three strong women uh, who just love to talk about their adventures as they eat their traditional foods. Have a look. I'm so glad you invited me here. <laughs> oh, We're happy to have you. Oh, because I remember in my time, we all went to Duda's house, our grandmother's house. And if you didn't go, oh, what was you? Everything we're making today is traditional food that we eat here in Ganawage, and it's sort of like our comfort food, you know, it's our our go-to meals, it's meals that, especially the cornbread and steak in Mina reminds me of, of being a kid, yeah. and it was my favorite food to eat when I was little, and my great-grandmother, she made the best cornbread in my opinion. I just have to say, this is all delicious. Yeah. I'm yeah. super impressed with us. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think, Gagayista? Oh, it's delicious. I just love how animated <laughs> and open people are as they're eating their traditional dishes and chatting with you. That was really fun. It was. And, you know, it sort of goes a little bit against the concept of the show, which is people who come from other places to come and search for home here. You know, obviously the Mohawk people are the original inhabitants of the land, um, but they spoke to me a little bit about how they've taken their traditional foods and the spices that have come from other places. So it's a bit of a positive twist on what has been more of a negative past. Mm. Um, and speaking about that, the elder that you see in the episode is a survivor of the residential school system. So in some of our extended footage that we'll have online, we talked to her about that. and. You know, she says, it's taken me 25 years to really heal and, and come to a place where I can be a happy person. And so we dive a little bit into that as well. You know, it goes to what you were saying off the top, how this uh, tradition of food and flavors and home is passed down from grandmothers. And she talks about that. And she's so proud of how she this is. new generation is taking on this tradition. She right? is. And she actually says, you know, they're more Mohawk than I am because, you know, for her it was you're not supposed to be who you are, whereas for them, she's encouraging them to learn about their culture, mm. which is very cool for them. I love that about this series, and we have a lot more to delve into. So Rachel's going to stay with us, and right after the break, we're going to take you on a culinary adventure in Ireland, where the food is often overshadowed by the beer, just like home tries out Ireland's best comfort food, and that's coming up next. Ireland's biggest exports are like Guinness and people and you can find Irish people everywhere. But I would say our biggest connection to Ireland has to be through food, mm -hmm. definitely. Any event throughout the year, whether it's Easter, it's Christmas, we have these traditional dishes with us and it just reminds us of home. Um, specifically, our nanny and pa. Now that actually looked like so much fun hanging out at the Irish pub. It was, and you know what's hilarious is I was sitting there at 11 a.m. on a Wednesday or something, <laughs> and they're teaching me, you know, you have to swirl the whiskey, and you have to smell the whiskey, you know, all the different things on how to drink whiskey and beer, and I don't drink. <laughs> so I'm just like, yes, yes, great, pretending to take notes. and. But you learn a lot as well. I mean, <laughs> I, I totally agree with him that the Irish stew is the comfort food of the Irish people. Yes. Yeah. And what else did you learn? Well, you know what's really cool is the Irish people have such a place in Canada. They really help historically, you know, build all of the cities. So it was really interesting to meet two guys who are born from born from Ireland, moved to Calgary first and then moved to Montreal. So they're so Canadian, but they're so Irish. Mm. 
And it's nice to see that you can be two things at once. Yeah, it's true. Well, you're living proof of that. We're going to hear That's more true. about your story later <laughs> in this program. Well, growing up black in North America can be isolating, especially in the intense political climate we've seen lately. So how do you stay positive? For Jamaicans, it's all about community, music, and of course, food. In this episode of the Global News series, Just Like Home, Rachel Lau discovers the truth behind, don't worry, be happy. In the 30 years I've known you, I've never seen this jacket. I love it. Oh, it's brand new. <laughs> <laughs> What does it mean to grow up Caribbean in a place like Montreal that's so different? We have to um, embrace where you are. No matter what, this is where you live. You have to work with it then. It may have winter or whatever, but with the people there and everything, it just work out well. The food looked great uh, in it that was. episode, like in all, yeah. But you know, it became more about the just food, right? It did. You know, we wanted to do something about Jamaica because they have this stereotype of being so carefree and happy. But you know, there's always another side to things. So one of the things that Pat was telling us about is, you know, growing up black in Canada, it's not as easy as we think. You know, we always look at the states and we say we don't do that here, but We've seen incidences of things happening here. And she said, you know, in the 70s when she was here, if you were an Anglophone and you were black, you were Jamaican. If you were a Francophone and you were black, you were Haitian. Mm. And that's sort of their relationship with the police has been like that. Mm. So we the talk stereotypes persist, right? Yes. But the food helps the culture stay together. It does. It mm. does. And we talk a bit about that um, on a few other videos. There is a fun backstory to all this eating. How did you come up with the idea for this series? Long story short, my parents, of <laughs> course, um, they always tell us their stories of their childhood, the things that they ate growing up, but you know, it's their story. So we don't have that memory that, you know, the smell doesn't sort of ignite something for us. So I wanted to dive in a little deeper in that and it somehow snowballed into finding out about everybody. Your parents' background, they're from Singapore? They are, and, yes. And uh, you grew up in Australia. I did. So you got to know <laughs> many, many different cultures. Yes. And came here and they found some Singapore food that they really loved, They right? did. And my dad is friends with the owners now, <laughs> believe it or not, yeah. They've become close. That's why I don't miss Singapore. I have food here. <laughs> Once a customer told me, you forgot to take off the heads on the fish. <laughs> no. That's the best part. <laughs> Brings you back to like uh, when your like grandmother used to make dessert for you, you know, or like when you'd go home and uh, you know you go to your favorite hockey stand in uh, in Singapore and you had like you know a noodle dish that you you crave, you know. So for sure, that's always like really nice to hear when uh, when we bring back memories through food or even. Uh, other people that traveled, you know, they're like, oh, I remember I went to Singapore like 10 years ago on a trip, you know, and it like tastes like this, or, or your satay sauce tastes like uh, one I had like over here. So that's always fun. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, man. I love your parents. Aren't they cool? It's, it's pretty fun. <laughs> and what it, they gave you this great idea for this web series, and we're so grateful. You're into the second season now. Are. What are What do we have to look forward to? You know, we, we showed a few of the episodes here, a few more to come for mm -hmm. sure. Um, we learned how to make homemade cavatelli. Oh, which is, with the Italian Nona. With the Italian, well, it was the no-no. No-no. Yeah, it was oh. with no-no. It was no-no who was cooking. Yes, it's so time consuming making pasta. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. I've seen it done. So you've yeah. learned a lot through this series, right? We have, and it, it even inspires your own cooking at home. Mm. You know, there's different things that you can do, different spices, different inspirations from different cultures. So even on a personal level, we've learned so much about people. Yeah, not just about food, but about the people and the culture. Yeah. Right? We hope we've inspired you to learn more about cultures and food from around the world. And all the episodes of Just Like Home, as mentioned, are available on our website, globalnews.ca slash Montreal, and on the Global YouTube page by searching Just Like Home.